discrete data and averages. Very common at GCSE and they're always really worth three to five marks depending on how much they ask you per question. So we're going to go through the three types of average, three types of average, mean, median, mode. Yeah, they all serve a purpose, but we need to know how to calculate all of them given listed data and we're going to look at tabulated data as well. And we're going to look at why we need to have tables as well. Okay. Now the first one, the mean. The mean is good for us because it takes into account all values. And the mean is simply to just add up all the values you see and divide by however many numbers you see. Okay. So here I've got find the mean, median and mode for this following data. Now all of this data is known as discrete data. Discrete means no in-between values, all right? So here I literally have 300, 400, 150, 200, 200, and 100. There's no in-between values, okay? So in this case, we have discrete data, yeah? How do we find, well, actually, I just said how to find the mean for that situation. So for the mean, what do you mean, what do you mean? We're just going to do 300 plus 400 plus all the way up to 100 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, which I very conveniently have my calculator here. So I'm doing 300, 400, 150, 200, 200, and 100 divided by 6, 225. Nice. Didn't even plan that. I just made this up right now. I was worried it was going to give me a decimal because it's over 6. Okay, and this is one of the disadvantages. So remember I said one of the advantages to the mean is that it considers all the data. One of the disadvantages is that the mean is very rarely part of your data set. 225, where do you see 225? Okay, it's not. So that's a disadvantage. The next one is the median. Now the median, you need to put all numbers in order and find the middle value. The median is great because it isn't skewed by extreme values. If you think about Microsoft and think about the salaries of individuals in Microsoft, you have the CEO of Microsoft earning millions of dollars every single year. And you have the apprentice or the intern who's earning $20,000. Okay. Now, when you take into account all of these salaries, that extreme salary of the CEO is going to skew everyone's salaries up. Okay. So that's why the mean is not great. However, with the median, we just cross them off from the ends until we get to the middle. Okay. And if you go on Google, and you type in mean salary UK versus median salary UK, you'll find the median salary is lower than the mean because the mean is skewing all of the salaries up. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put everything in order. So order in a courtroom, we have 100. We have 150. We have uh, two 200s. We have 300 and 400. Now, obviously, in this situation, guys, doing bang, bang, bang is very easy, right? However, if I give you 20 pieces of data, yeah, we're going to look at these situations in a second. It's very long to go, all right, uh, cross off from either end. So we need to locate the median. And I always use the hand to help us out. Where's the middle finger? It's the third finger. I have five fingers. I don't do five divided by two to get the third finger, do I? You do 5 plus 1 divided by 2. So guys, for discrete data, the middle number, you add 1, divide by 2. So for here, we have 6 pieces of data. The median is three, Sorry, 6, 6 plus 1 over 2, which is a 3.5 value. And then you count 1, 2, 3, 3 and 4. It's the value in between. Yeah, that's 3.5. Well, that is just 200. Sometimes you have to add the two numbers, divide by two, yeah, to find the middle. Well, when you add them, you get 400. You divide by two, you get 200. Okay. The final one, super easy, is the mode. The mode is the most common value. Okay. The most common value is 200. Okay. Now, the mode is not a great average to utilize. It is only good for non-numerical data. So if we're talking about 
the colors of cars, okay? The colors of cars, well, how are you finding the median of that? How do you order the color of cars? You can't, okay? The mode you can, you could just say red is the most, uh, um, most occurring color, okay? So bad for non-numerical data, uh, bad for numerical data, good for non-numerical data, okay? All right, tabulated data. Now this is very common at GCSEs. I'm gonna show you guys why it's so important that we understand where the tables come from and what they mean and how it relates to this stuff, okay? Now, by tabulating the following list of numbers first, find the mean, median, and mode. So by seeing this, guys, and then drawing a table, we can easily form that connection because a lot of the time you just get shown you need to do this or you need to do cumulative frequency and you need to multiply the rows, but why do you do that? So, if I wanted to find the mean of this, what do you notice about this data compared to this one? Well, there's so many repeated numbers, okay? That's the first thing we notice. So if I wanted to work out the mean, I'll do 0 plus 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 0, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. You can see that's really tedious, right? And this is why we tabulate the data. Because instead of doing 0 added to itself what looks like 8 times, I'll just do 8 times 0. And here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, instead of doing 1 added to itself 11 times, I'll just do 1 times 11. And that's easiest to be done if it was tabulated, okay? So here are my values, let's just call it x. And f is your frequency of numbers. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here, 0 occurs 8 times. This was 11 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 3 occurs 3 times, 4 occurs once, and 5 occurs once, okay? So to find the mean, we need to add up all of these numbers and divide by however many numbers there are. But that's quickest done by just doing 8 lots of 0, 11 lots of 1, 12 lots of 2. So this is why we multiply, because we are grouping the numbers which are repeating. And we call that xf, okay? 0 times 8 is 0, here we have 11, here we have 24, here we have 9, 4, and 5. And then we add them up. Yeah, remember what we're doing, guys? We are adding all of these numbers up. We're just grouping them to add them up much quicker. Okay? So, I have 11, 24, 9, 4, and 5. So, 53. Okay? And then we need to divide that by however many numbers there are. I don't want to do one, two, three, four, I'm not adding, I'm not counting how many numbers there are. I'm adding the total frequency to tell me how many numbers there are, okay? So we add the frequencies here to tell us however many numbers there are, okay? So we have eight plus 11 plus 12 plus three plus one plus one, 36, okay? So our mean, our mean, is 53 divided by 36, which is approximately 53 divided by 36, about 1.47. Makes sense to be somewhere over here, right? Because look at the highest frequencies around here. Now, just for your extra knowledge, this is known as sigma xf. Sigma just means sum, the total of. And this here, is sigma f. Sigma f meaning the total frequency. So guys, just remember your mean, you guys seem to love sigma and all that stuff. So sigma xf divided by sigma f. Okay? So that's why, guys, we multiply across and add the columns. The next thing we need to do is we need to do the median. Now for the median, we first need to locate where the middle number is. Yeah, where is it? Well, I told you guys that for discrete data, we need to add 1 divided by 2. Yeah, so guys, remember, all tabulated data like this, where we have single numbers over here, is discrete data. So first, we need to know how many numbers are there. Well, we know that. It's 36. But you need to add 1 divided by 2. Okay? So guys, you don't just divide by 2. It's 36 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 18 
0.5. We're looking for the 18.5th number, okay? Now remember guys, in the exam, you don't have this. So how do you locate the 18.5th number? I'm only using this to help you guys see it. Well, we do it like this. We say, look, I have, I know that there's eight zeros. So I know that the eighth number is zero. Then I know the next 11 numbers is one. Yes, yeah, so I know the next 11 numbers are all ones. So I do eight plus 11, which is 19. And I know that the 19th number is one and between the eighth and the 19th are all ones. Okay. And then I'm saying, okay, the next 12 numbers are two. Uh, yeah, are two. So that means if I add uh, 19 and 12, I get what, 31? Whoops, that's not the last two. I get 31. I know that my 31st number is two. Then I know the next three numbers will be three. So 31 plus three is 34. So I know my 34th number is three. Then on my 35th and my 36th. This is known as the cumulative frequency. Okay, so we won't have this. So what we'd actually do is we would add an extra column for my cumulative frequency. And I would say the first eight numbers are zero. So my eighth number is zero. Then I add 11. 8 plus 11, 19. My 19th number is 1. Then I'm going to add 12. My next 12 numbers are 2. So that gives me 31. Yeah, my 31st number is 2. Then I add 3. My 34th number is 3. And then I have my 35th number is 4. And my 36th number is 5. Okay? That's the utility of the cumulative frequency. And then we know that the 18.5th value is between 18 and 19. And I know between the 8th and the 19th are all 1s. So you just read across. So that's 1. Okay. Then finally, the mode is the most frequent value. The most frequent value is 12. But that is the number 2. So be careful. Students write 12. The most frequent number is 2. That's in the data. 12 is not in the data. And this is how we do all the averages. And remember, guys, in the exam, they don't give you this. So you need to be able to do everything I've just taught you without this data. All right? What you need to do is practice it a couple of times. But you have to remember that if it's single values in the first column, so single values, that is discrete. Okay, no in-between values. In the next video or the next GCSE video, hopefully that I upload, I'm going to be doing continuous distributions. Now, continuous distributions, you'll have a range, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15. Those are continuous data, or that is continuous data, because you can have in-between values, 0 to 5. Between 0 and 5, you can have as many values as you want between 0 and 5. That is continuous. So the way we go about this is very different. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you did learn something today, maybe you know, some of you guys know this process kind of, but you've figured out, oh, this is where it comes from. Yeah, hit that like button, subscribe for more mass content. And if you're interested in my GCSE courses, more details in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.